Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Professor Sistrunk and I am reaching back out to my cybersecurity students. We just completed a lab, now we finna step off into another lab. Remember, I told you, I do labs every day. Every day, over and over again, and I'm hoping that you get on the same page. I said in my previous lab that the difference between you and a person that's working in this position right now is that when that person show up, this is their job, they do it every day, the same thing over and over again. So that builds a habit for them in the organization and that gets them on point of knowing what to do. With you, you gotta start creating that habit. And that habit is labs, packet tracer, case studies, whatever you can get your hands on that will give you that knowledge on how to do this job. Now, with that being said, I wanna add another element to this, especially about the labs. For instance, these labs put together will be your journal, your logs. And you have to make sure you keep them in order. So when you complete a lab, don't just save it to your desktop. Print it out and start creating your book, what we call our log book. So you can always reflect on the particular answers you gave and the things that you do in these labs, these packet traces, these case studies. Yes, it's going to get thick. But when you have to refer back to something, you don't have to go inside of the course. Remember, this course is finite. It will end very soon. But you will have a log of material that you have completed and that you'll be always be able to refer back to. You creating your own log book. So remember that. Save this material. Print it out. Don't be that person who saves it on the desktop and then when they have to come look for it, they realize they wiped their desktop clean and lost all their material. Save it. And once you print it out, now you can jot notes down on particular areas that gave you problem or that you didn't understand to empower your knowledge base so you can continue to grow. Okay, so moving forward, this next log, you see how I just said it? This next log, this next lab will be in the realm of a case study. You already completed it, but I just want to make sure that I give you more knowledge on how to do things. So I'm going to check my notes. So we will be reviewing this particular lab, and this lab is called 1.1.6 uh, it's cybersecurity case studies you already completed if you didn't go back do it upload it and this particular lab will cover research and analyze cybersecurity incidents so with that being said let's go let's get the lab done okay now let's get focused on this new lab 1.1.6 lab cybersecurity case study. We want to research and we want to analyze cybersecurity incidents. In part one, we want to conduct search of high profile cyber attacks. In part two, we just want to write an analysis of a cyber attack. With the background scenario, we want to we want to look at what governments, businesses, and individual users are increasingly the targets of cyber attacks and experts predict that these attacks are likely to increase in the future. Of course, cybersecurity education is a top international priority as high profile cybersecurity related incidents rise to fear that attacks could threaten the global economy. So in this particular lab, we want to make sure we know we want to know the who, the what, the why, and how of each attack. Remember I said this earlier, this is your log. 
this is where you put your notes down print it out after you complete it so you can always refer back to it i am doing it so you can see what the professor is looking for okay so print it out remember at the end of this course the course is finite it will end but you will have all of your material to refer back to and to consistently do your labs over and over again. Okay, let's move on. So we had a couple of international events. We had various virus attacks. Using your favorite search engine, we want you to go in there and look at these particular attacks we want you to go in there and do research on these particular attacks just to see what happened. And after you read the information of each one of these attacks, we want you to actually pick one and then write some information up. Remember, you will see that I have completed my work ahead of time so we can make sure that we don't waste time. We get straight to the point. Time is of essence. It's money. Okay, who were the victims of this attack? So if you go back and look at what happened with the Iran's nuclear uh, cyber hack, it was basically the government that was attacked. The Iranian government was attacked. What technologies and tools were used in this attack? Well, when you read through the story, you see that a U USB was infected with a, a worm, and this worm was let loose on computers within the Iranian government. When did the attack happen? It has dates here when it actually happened, 2005, 2007, but when it was really discovered and they start talking about it, that's when stuff started coming out in 2009 to prevent it from happening. But you can go in like you did and read through this information. What systems were targeted? Okay, so it affected most of the computers, but it was geared towards those individuals who work in the industry of nuclear power. Whatever happened, it happened for a reason. But I don't want to go into that because this, this assignment is not about that. This assignment is about you being able to discover hacks within your organization. And that's what you're doing research on. So if you see me being careful with my words, it's simply because I don't want to get into that. The next question is, what was the motivation of the attackers uh, in this case? Well, the, the motivation was to disrupt and neutralize their nuclear facilities, okay? And what was the outcome of the attack? They damaged a lot of systems. I mean, they pretty much shut down the nuclear process, but hey, that's all gonna continue to go on. So you see basically what I did. Now, what I wanna point out that's important, highlight the areas where you get the inf information. Remember, these are places where you will consistently go. So make sure you highlight these places within your articles. This is important when you do research. One, you want to give credit to the places where you got the information. And two, you want to make sure that you can always go back to that particular article. And as I move on, like I said in my earlier video logs, as I move on, you're going to see me do more and more detail about citing the sources so you can be on the same page. Well, I hope you enjoyed this particular lab and we're going to move on to the next one. See you in the next lab.